All right, so I have one other image that's a solid to single cell, and that's my squares image. So I'm going to go ahead and create a image asset for that. Use my app code. Uh, let's see, it's going to be squares image. It is an image asset. Now the whole idea of my template always having to type in the schema location is probably not the most optimal way of doing it. If I were to create this asset inside of, say, script or my console and save it out, this schema location would automatically be placed in there. But since I'm not doing that, I'm using my workflow. All right, so once again, I know I need an asset name. I'll say this is my Squares image, image file, which is squares.png. And because I'm, again, I, I, I like my way of formatting, I like seeing this the way I do with it. So there is squares image, squares.png. I'm just going to go ahead and just keep going, create the rest. But now we're going to get into. See, I'm going to do the soldier die. Let's go ahead and copy that so I can use it more. So there's a difference with this image: the soldier die, soldier idle, and soldier run animation or images. App code also has a nice little image viewer. As you can see, it's multiple sprites inside of a single image file. And Tor2D's image assets can handle that just fine. So I'm going to close this out. And the way that works is the, I need to add cell counts and cell dimensions. So if I were to pop this up, I'm going to go ahead and just say this is my uh, soldier die image. This is soldier die dot png. Now here's where we get into something different than what I've been showing so far. Uh, if I pop up my autocomplete, I see there's a cell count x, cell count y, cell width, and cell height is what I'm needing. So this image I know is 1024 by 1024 and all the soldier images are evenly spaced out and I have to know that there's you know, four across and four down so for the cell count X there's four there's four for the cell count Y so four across four down and each individual cell because it's evenly spaced is essentially 1024 divided by four so cell height is 256, cell width is also 256. <clears throat> now again, I could easily see if I messed up by say uh, 256. And my schema doesn't like that. It's saying it shouldn't be text, it should be an int, it should be a number. So let me fix that. And this is the most that I need, or the, the minimum amount needed, to create an image asset that has multiple cells. You know, I've got my asset name, the file, the number of cells, you know, x and y, and then the width and height of each one. And I can just repeat that for the rest of mine as well. So I'm going to do that for my, let's see, soldier idle image which is an image asset. Soldier idle image. And again, this is a uh, 
I can actually just copy and paste the rest of this in without an issue. So I'm going to do that. Just to save time and so you don't have to hear me constantly typing. And that's fair. And the last one that I was going to create was the soldier run. Now this is also prone to error. You know, anytime you're doing copy and paste, you could easily mess up. So I'm going to change this to soldier run image and soldier run. And now if all this has gone well, which you know my schema is telling me I haven't made any errors, and I were to look at all of these, you know, I've got my background, soldier die, soldier idle, and soldier run. So now I have all the image assets I'm going to use for this tutorial, and I want to start showing these inside of my scene. I already showed the background, so I'm going to start adding some more script to get the uh, images just showing up so we can see what they look like. Alright, so I need to get back into my script. I'm just going to close out all the files I've been creating. Okay, so I want to start showing all the sprites and I want to show them kind of as they've appeared. And to do them, you know, I can create multiple functions and say, so, you know, create background and everything, but just for the sake of time and just showing a nice progression, I'm going to just uh, keep creating things inside of the reset function, which is safe because every time the reset is called, everything is cleared out and then all the sprites are added again. So let me start with, uh, you know, let's just display one of the soldier sprites. So I'm going to create a soldier sprite. Give it an asset ID of soldier, oh, I don't know, run image. Put it at the center. And I'm going to make its size uh, even 2020. And this should make it fairly large and put it in the center. And there's one new thing, uh, there's a new field I want to modify. I need to set its frame. And what this is doing is is saying in this image asset that I'm using, I want to use the fifth frame. And of course, I need to add it to the scene. So hopefully, if I don't have a corrupted image and uh, looks like I don't have any real syntax problems, which Torque will let me know immediately. There it goes. So you can see, here's my soldier, and if you can uh, look at his uh, image and compare it to the sprite sheet, that is the fifth frame. If I were to change this to say zero and run, you see the uh, image has changed. There's something else handy you can kind of do. It's it's not often that you're going to see me uh, advocate the idea of editing a script and then reloading the sandbox. I usually like to shut down and do a lot more editing. So just to show it off though, I'm going to change this to cell 5 again. And instead of shutting down torque, I'm just going to hit reload toy. And that reloaded my script.